Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we are going to go through a subscriber scavenger hunt. I wanted to do this video to celebrate you guys because I recently hit 900 subscribers. I would not be here without you. I cannot believe that there are 900 people in the world that find my content interesting. There's so many of you who are chatting with me in the comments every single day, every single week. You're in my sprints. I am I'm just truly blessed to have you guys in my lives and I wanted to do something a little bit fun, uh, maybe interactive with you guys and so I did a couple of days ago ask you all for some prompt ideas in my community post and I had a lot lot of people <laughs> answer the call for my prompts list and so I created a little bit of a scavenger hunt for you guys. This is not a typical scavenger hunt. I have created some goals in mind and some rewards if I meet those goals, some punishments if I don't, and you guys are actually going to be involved in both. So if I get the reward, you guys will be involved in that way, and if I get the punishment, you guys will also be involved in that. Uh, I just think this is going to be a fun way for us to interact on my channel, and I, I hope that you enjoy it. So what are the rules of this scavenger hunt, you ask? Well, I have my prompt jar full of the prompts that you gave me in that community post and I want to pull 10 of these. At the end of the 10, I would like the prompt to indicate to me which of the physical TBR books that I have that I'm going to have to read for a vlog that I will post at a later date. There will be a secondary book on that vlog, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Those are not the only rules though. <laughs> so within these 10 prompts, I want seven of them to be fulfilled by my physical collection. So they can be books that I've read or books that I haven't read, uh, as long as I own them physically and can show you a copy of them. Seven out of 10 prompts have to be physical. The other three prompts can be books from Goodreads, just books that I want to read or books that I have read. So they're a little bit easier to get. The next goal is that I have to have 60% of these picks, 60% of the books that I find have to be books that I have read in the past. So that can include the physical collection, obviously, if I'm picking a book that I have read, but it can also include those three that I can get from Goodreads. If I pick books that I've read, that would count towards that 60% goal. So those are the two goals that I have to get in order to get my reward, essentially. The last goal is that I end on a physical collection or a physical TBR book, which I don't think that that really is a goal that's just kind of the point of the scavenger hunt. The end, the last prompt, the tenth prompt will lead me to pick a physical TBR book. But the two that are going to lead me to get the reward in the end is at least seven physical collection books and 60% of the books that I select have to be books I've already read. I have two rewards. The first I can get if I've just met one goal. So if I pick seven books from my physical collection, or at least seven, or if I pick at least 60% uh, of books that I have read in the past, I can get this goal. And that is that the second uh, book that will be in the reading vlog will be a book that is a highly anticipated read. And I am going to give you guys a selection of books on my community tab, and you'll get to vote on which book <laughs> that will be. The second reward that I will only get if I meet both of my goals is to purchase a book, but I have to purchase a book that I've already read. And once again, you guys will get to select this as well. I will give you guys a list of probably five books and put out a community tab post and you will tell me which one you would like me to add to my collection. All of these are books are going to be books that I want to eventually add to my collection. It's just which one do I purchase now? There is only one punishment. However, I will receive this punishment for each goal I don't receive or each goal I don't reach. So I could have to do this twice. So the punishment is that I read one of my lowest rated books on Goodreads that's on my TBR already. This is another thing that you guys will choose. So what I will do is after this scavenger hunt is over and the results have been figured out, I will go into my Goodreads, find the probably five lowest rated books on my TBR or my want to read list, and I will post those on my community tab and you guys will tell me which books you would like me to read. In the case that I have to read two of the lowest, I will just take the two highest voted responses from that poll and those will be the two books that I put in that reading blog. Without further ado, let's get started. So I am going to shake this up and I am probably going to cut out the parts of me looking for the books on my physical TBR because I don't want to keep you guys here for days. So, but I will show you guys my picks of the prompts. So, okay. Prompt number one. This is nerve wracking. I will also tell you before I open this up, there are some prompts in here that I might have to manipulate a little bit. 
um, to fit a physical TBR, like not substantially, um, but there are some prompts that I put in here that I was like, I don't, I don't know if that's going to work for a physical TBR prompt or like they would build on the prompt previous to them. And so I might have to put them back and we'll deal with that when we get to it. So our first prompt. Ooh, this is, I don't know if this is going to focus on my face. And if you guys are gonna be able to read that, it says foil on the cover. So this book, I do have, I do have one physically. Hold on just one second. I should also say that I have to be careful choosing books because I can't repeat books. <laughs> so, uh, and I have a limited number of physical collection, but this is the book I'm choosing for this. This is Trust of the Emerald Sea. And I do have this very nice foiled edition uh, that came in the Year of Sanderson boxes last year. And I'm so proud to have this. It's a lovely book. Uh, it's a book that is based or inspired by the Princess Bride. And you follow Tress, who lives on an island, does not want to leave her island. She's perfectly content with her life, but because of certain circumstances, she does have to leave and go on a little bit of an adventure. It's, uh, I, I think that this is probably one of my favorite Sanderson's. I still think Stormlight and Miss Bourne are above it. <laughs> but other than those two, I do think that this is just an amazing book. I have read this, and it's a physical TBR book. So, so far so good. Next pick. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so this one is going to be a little weird to do with my physical TBR, but we'll see if we can make it happen. So this says, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see that, lowest rated book on Goodreads from a friend. So I'm gonna have to search <laughs> for a minute to see if I can find a book on my physical TBR that a friend has rated really low. So give me a minute. Okay, that took me a little bit. <laughs> um, I have hunted on Goodreads and I did, so I couldn't necessarily find like, when it says the lowest rated on Goodreads, I don't know like, with their one stars, which one stars are like less than another. So I just looked for a one star and I was trying to find a physical book because I want to meet my goals. <laughs> um, so I just was looking for a one star on my friend's channels on Goodreads that I have absolutely loved because if I don't absolutely love a book, it's not gonna be on my physical collection. And I found one, <laughs> which I am shocked. So this is A Gathering of Shadows which is the second book in the uh, Darker Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab. This was my favorite book in the series. <laughs> and Michaela Reads over at, or Michaela over at Michaela Reads rated it one star. So um, thank you, Michaela, <laughs> for allowing me to, to own a book that you absolutely hated. Uh, I read a little bit of her review, um, which definitely shows that she was not enjoying this book, uh, chose not to move on with the, the series. But yeah, this was my favorite <laughs> out of the, the, the trilogy. I haven't read the, um, the second book or the second series like the spin-off series of fragile threads but I, I did finish the original trilogy and the second book was by far my favorite of the three um i rated this i think it was a 4.5 star so <laughs> i do i own a book that is the the lowest rated by one of my friends sorry michaela but thank you for giving me this book <laughs> If you guys haven't heard of Darker Shades, um, I, I won't explain the second book because of spoilers, but Darker Shades of Magic is a trilogy where you fe you follow two main characters, Kel and Lila, and Kel is um, an Antari. So he has magic, he can travel amongst the different worlds. There is all these different types of Londons. There's a red London, a gray London, a black London, a white London, and all of them have various forms of magic or no magic at all. And most people in the world do not realize that these, or they realize that they exist, but they don't, they can't travel to these other Londons, but because Kel is Antari, he gets to. Lila is someone who is down on her luck, um, definitely has to, do some some things to survive to make her life a little bit easier and they get intertwined in some kingdom politics the the bigger picture of the fact that there are all these different types of london some of them are struggling more than others because of their ability to use magic uh, and i just thought it was a really fun series next pick oh if you hear andy's feeder going off <laughs> he's going to go eat now let's see this one's a big one 
uh, a book whose Goodreads average matches your Goodreads average. My, this is another one that I'm going to have to go look up. So you guys, so you know, I'm telling the truth. Um, so this one, a book whose Goodreads average matches your Goodreads average. So I'm gonna have to go figure out what my Goodreads average is. And then I'm going to go look on my physical TBR shelf to see if any of them have a Goodreads rating that's the same. <laughs> so give me a minute again. Okay, so that took a little bit of digging as well. <laughs> All these Goodreads questions. And I know there's at least one more in the jar. <laughs> so this might not be the last time I have to go to Goodreads. Um, I unfortunately could not find a book that I had read that was that matched this criteria. But I found a book that I owned. <laughs> unfortunately, that means that this book is like out of the running for the last book that I will read. So the book that I'll read my physical TBR, but uh, we'll see. So... <laughs> My average Goodreads rating right now is a 3.88. So the book that I found didn't match exactly, but it was a 3.87, which I feel like that's fair. So, and that is Frankenstein. Uh, this is a lovely edition that Leander actually purchased for me for my birthday. And I still have not read it. <laughs> I have two, this is, I think this is the only book in my collection I have two editions of because I have this one and then I have the 1818 text. And I still haven't read it. I've read part of it. I got to, and it was, I didn't stop because I didn't like it. I just got busy reading other things and forgot about it. And so I need to go back and restart. So this one, I, I do own it, but I have not read it. So but we'll see how the rest of this goes, my friends. Okay, next pick. So this is the fourth pick. This one should be easy. <laughs> so this says a five-star prediction with a trope that you've loved. I don't know. I should have written these bigger. Sorry, guys. I wasn't thinking whenever I wrote all these down on little scraps of paper. So I need to find a five-star prediction with a trope that I love. So the question is, do I want to, since it's a five-star prediction, I feel like I have to choose a book that I haven't read yet, which means I'm not meeting my goal of picking books that I, like that 60% goal. That's okay. That's okay. We can, we can do it in a minute. So give me a second. Okay. You can probably tell which book I grabbed <laughs> from the holes that are happening behind me, but I have chosen Valor for this. So this is the second book in the Faithful and the Fallen series. I read Malice earlier this year and it was a 4.5. And I just can imagine this series becoming a five-star series because I already know the characters and I do currently have this on Libby. <laughs> so uh, it's almost a red, but it does not count because I have not read it yet, uh, but I do own it physically. So this is a five-star prediction. If you've never heard of Malice or the Faithful and the Fallen series, um, it's a very large series. I don't know how I can explain it to you, but you follow two main characters, but there are lots of POVs and lots of just characters in general that you meet. And <clears throat> there are some kingdom politics at play. You have a boy who lives in a village. He is kind of a coming of age. And you get to see him experience something that you know that there's something bigger going on with him. He also has an animal companion that you get to know. And uh, the other character you follow is the prince of the king who is creating a war band because there are some ominous things going on in the kingdom that are definitely pointing to wars and larger things at play um, with the gods. And yeah, uh, I have absolutely loved it so far. I love John Gwynn's writing. I like the worlds that he creates. The characters just have my heart. So I, I do think that this will probably be a five star. Okay. Ooh, this one's gonna be hard. <laughs> so this says more than one animal on the cover. So more than one animal. If it was one animal, that would be easy. But when I was writing this down, I was like, nope, they said more than one animal. <laughs> so hold on just a second. Let me see if I can find one. That actually wasn't that difficult. <laughs> I just recently was talking about this book and this does have a bird and a bunny on the front cover. So this is The Magician's Daughter. I've talked about this on like the last three videos, <laughs> but it features a girl named Biddy who is taken care of on this magical island by a magician named Rowan. And Rowan one night doesn't come home. Biddy has to decide whether or not to leave the island, which she's never done uh, to try and help Rowan out. And there's, there's a, world, a world beyond the, the island that she's not familiar with that does not 
have magic or it doesn't have it as readily available as she had on this island and there's so many heartbreaking things that she finds in the world that she has not had to deal with uh, in growing up. I absolutely love this story but two animals on the cover. So this is one that I own and one that I've read. I'm doing pretty good. Let's see. I shouldn't have said that. I I'm gonna jinx it. Okay this is another big one. Okay a title that has the same letter somewhere as the last thing that you ate. So sorry. <laughs> okay I like this prompt because it is it's simple but probably also difficult because of what I just ate. I had potato soup and grilled cheese for lunch. <laughs> So I'm going to have to find a title that has a P somewhere in the title. So give me a minute. For this one, I have chosen Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. So it does have a P with painter. This is another one of those Brandon Sanderson books, The Secret Projects from the Year of Sanderson. And this one features Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. So if you haven't heard of this, this is one of Sanderson's romance <laughs> books. And I, I do think it's very cute. I, I think it's YA, I'm pretty sure. If not, it's close. <laughs> it's definitely not like a steamy romance by any means, but you follow two characters. Uh, I'm not going to give you too much information about them because I don't want to spoil any of the storyline, but you have Yumi who is being trained to be a, um, I don't remember what the official title is, but she stacks rocks to have this like calming effect on the spirits and um, have some 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 sort of power with with the spirits and boons within the spirits and then you have Nightmare Painter who uh, literally has the job of painting nightmares to prevent the nightmares from affecting the people in his city so they can paint them and essentially capture them on canvas and then get rid of the nightmares so they don't bother the people anymore uh, it was a really really cute story not my favorite because uh, I, <laughs> I think that uh, while I absolutely love Sanderson, I think that his romances sometimes are just not for me. And uh, I didn't really enjoy the ending, <laughs> but I, I do think that it, it's a good story. I rated it, I think it was a 4.25. So I, I think it's great. I it just was not my, my favorite Sanderson. Okay, so, so far I have six books physically. So I only have to have one more to meet, to meet that goal. <laughs> and then I've read four. So I need to at least get two more books on my list that I've read. And I guess I am keeping a little chart <laughs> to keep track of what I've accomplished so far. So let's move to the seventh prompt. A book with one or more words on, or sorry, a book with one or more words in the title from your top three reads of 2024. Interesting. Okay. So that has, that's a lot of, of things to consider. So a book with one or more words from the top three reads of 2024. So my top three reads of 2024 were The Book the Wind Burn, uh, The Will of the Many, and was my third The Magician's Daughter? Let me check that real quick. Ooh, it could have been, it might have been Engines of Empire. Let me check. Okay, so my top three were The Book That Wouldn't Burn, The Will of the Many, and Engines of Empire. So I need to find a book with one or more of the words in those titles in them. I have one in mind, but I'm gonna see if I can find something a little bit more challenging than that one. So give me a minute. Okay, the book that I've chosen for this is The Book of Doors. <laughs> the prompt did say one or more words, and this has the word book, which does match the word book from the book that wouldn't burn. So I think it counts. I did try and look at my physical TBR to see if I could find a book that had more than one of the words, but I couldn't find uh, anything that combined the words. So this one will work. This is a book on my physical TBR and one that I've read. So I have met my physical TBR or my physical collection uh, goal. I need one more for my reading goal. If you haven't heard me talk about The Book of Doors, this is currently my favorite book of this year where you follow a girl named Cassie, I think is her main name. Yes, Cassie is our main character. She works in a bookstore and there is an older man who is a, a, patro a patron, patron? A patron of the bookstore 
who comes in every evening and has a cup of coffee and just sits and reads. And she has a, a lovely conversation with him, goes into the back to pack up for the night and comes back and the man has passed away. And he has left her the Book of Doors. And this book allows her to travel anywhere in the world just by walking through a door. So she decides to start having some adventures, but she doesn't realize that in stepping into this other world, this magical world she didn't realize existed, that some nefarious things are also at play and she puts herself in danger. So I absolutely love this. I think it was fantastically written. It's a debut novel as well. If you haven't heard of it or haven't read it yet, please give it a try. Okay, one more, or not one more, but <laughs> the next one. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Although I'm not wearing anything fancy. This says match your outfit. So I need a book that matches my outfit, which means I need a black book <laughs> because I'm wearing black. So let's see. Hmm. Ooh, I think actually this one works perfect. Matches my hair too. <laughs> so Vita Nostra, uh, this is a book on my physical collection and I have read it. So woo, I meet both of my goals, guys. I'm so excited. I actually have succeeded or exceeded my goals for uh, finding books that are actually my physical collection. So I'm, I'm really proud of myself. If you haven't heard of Vita Nostra, it is a very weird <laughs> academic, like dark academic novel, novel about, how do I even describe? A girl is approached by a man and is told that if he doesn't, if she doesn't do what he tells her to do, that something bad will happen in her life. She doesn't believe him at first and something bad happens. And so she starts following his rules, gets pulled into kind of a magical school and some weird things ensue. <laughs> it is very strange, a book that I would like to reread because I definitely know there are details that I missed. This has a sequel that was published like a decade after this original novel was. And I haven't decided whether or not I want to continue on because I, I do appreciate how this book ended. So I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, two more books, guys. Oh, one more, and then I have to find a physical TBR book that I have to read. So this will be the last one that I is kind of like open game for any of my books. Let's see. Same number of characters as Danny Dabbles in the title or author name. Oh my, okay, this is gonna take me a minute. I will be back. I realize I didn't show you guys this. So just, I hope that you know I'm not lying. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, it has to have the same number of characters as Danny Dabbles. So Danny Dabbles is 12 characters long. And it actually didn't take me that long. I'm kind of surprised. So the ninth reign, the title has 12 characters. So this is also a physical collection book and a book I've read. <laughs> What? What is this crazy madness? <laughs> so this is a series I haven't completed yet, though. I still need to read the third book in the series, but oh, I just love this. This flop is just amazing. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm getting distracted. So the Ninth Reign is a fantasy series featuring a group of individuals. I think there's three main characters. You have a scientist, a... Oh, I'm not going to remember what their, their names are, uh, but there's a race of individuals who are kind of like elves who are quote unquote immortal, but not really. And then there is a, a fell witch that you follow as well. And they're all in kind of different locations in this kingdom. There's some things happening within this kingdom that are indicating some bad things are to come, some things that are in their history. The elven race that is in this has had some bad dealings with humans in the past. There's definitely bad blood among the races. And because of what has happened, there is a plague amongst the elven creatures is causing them to die out. And they are really the only creatures that know the history of the world and these ominous things that have happened, these uh, almost apocalyptic events that have happened that have been prevented in the past because of their history. But now that history has been eradicated because this race has been eradicated and these three individuals come together to see if they can help save the world, essentially. It is an amazing series that I've had a lot of fun with. Uh, and if you haven't heard of it, you should go give it a try. 
That means that all 10 of my books, because we haven't gotten to the 10th prompt yet, but all 10 will have come from my physical collection, which I am shocked. I really thought that 70% was going to get me because I, I know that I don't have a super large collection of books and some of these prompts were really specific. So um, I'm, I'm really happy with that. And seven of them will be books that I've read. Three of them will be books that I haven't read because the 10th book will be a book for my physical collection that I haven't read. That means that I'd get the rewards. <laughs> so I get to purchase a, a book that I have read that I would like to add to my collection. And I also get to read a high, highly anticipated read. So there will be two books in that reading vlog that is to come. One of them we're about ready to pick with my physical TBR. And one of them will be my highly anticipated release that you guys will choose. And then I will also have that little haul for the book that you guys picked for me. So the grand finale, let's figure out what physical TBR book I will be reading. And this is one too that I might have to throw one back if it doesn't, if it's not something that I can choose for my physical TBR, but we'll see. Oh, <laughs> so this one I am going to manipulate just because of personal information. So this says uh, a book published in the month or year that you are born. And I do not release either of those pieces of information <laughs> um, on the internet. I just haven't so far and I know that once I release that information it's gone or it's out there for good. So I am going to change this instead of my birth month or year, I'm going to say my booktube birthday or year. So uh, I'm probably going to go with year because I think it'll be easier maybe to find a book. But we'll see. Um, let me check really quick. I'm pretty sure that my booktube birthday is March of 2022. But let me look really quickly and see if I am correct. Technically, I joined in February of 2022, but I'm pretty sure I didn't post a video until March. Give me a second. Yeah. Yeah, my first video was posted uh, in March of 2022. So I'm going to try and find a 2022. If I can't find a 2022, I'll try and find a March publication date, but I'll be back. This actually worked out perfectly, guys, <laughs> because I was planning on reading this book this month. And I haven't started it yet. And it's a standalone in a series, so I do think that when I vlog it, I can still give you guys details because it's not going to spoil the original story. <laughs> That's grief of or the grief of stones. I am really excited that this. I didn't realize this was published in 2022. I thought that this was for sure going to be published way earlier than that because I know the Goblin Emperor was. So this is a standalone within the Goblin Emperor series. The Goblin Emperor, I don't, I have no idea what this book is about. I just know that it's within that universe. The Goblin Emperor features Maya, who is a half goblin who, because of unfortunate circumstances and his father and five elder brothers getting killed in a very suspicious accident, he becomes emperor, he's not prepared, and he has to figure out how to deal with kingdom dynamics, uh, as well as try and protect himself from potentially getting murdered because he doesn't know what happened to his parent, his, his father and his uh, siblings. So this is a book that features a character in that world. And I've really liked the witness for the dead, which was the first standalone that I read for this. So yee, I'm excited to get to this. <laughs> so this was our journey. <laughs> throughout this experience. Oh my goodness. Uh, I am so excited that I actually had all, all of these physically. That's just amazing to me. And the fact this is the end of, of the scavenger hunt. I can't believe it. I am I'm just flabbergasted how well this worked out. Once again, I just want to thank you all for being here. I truly feel blessed being able to share my passion with you guys, joke and goof around about books and nerd out about things that aren't real, <laughs> but are still really fun to talk about and go through. And I'm glad that you guys are here with me. Don't forget to look in that community tab because I will have what book you guys want me to purchase. And then I will also have a poll for the um, highest or highly anticipated release. I will post that once once today. So one's active right now. And then one will be tomorrow as well. So you guys can vote on both of those options. Let me know in the comments down below whether or not you like this process. If you would like to see something like this again, maybe in the future celebrations. If you don't feel chatty, maybe leave. I don't know if there's, is there a rock <laughs> or a stone emoji? If there's not, you can just leave me a smiley face to let me know that you guys are here and that uh, I am talking to your lovely smiling faces. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.